Wie haben Sie Ihre Leidenschaft für die Molekularbiologie entdeckt? Ah, this happened actually when I was studying philosophy. And, um, and I was reading, um, it, it was a course on philosophy of science actually, I was reading Darwin. And uh, I really fell in love with the genetics uh, of the, the concept of genetic evolution and uh, then switched over to molecular biology. Sie sind einer der weltweit führenden Epigenetikerinnen. Was treibt sie an? Was inspiriert sie? Well, I think it's it's very simple. It's curiosity. I think we are always curious about uh, the world, about how things work, uh, and I think the molecular biology or epigenetics, gene expression, this is the basis of defining what organisms are, how the genome is expressed. We know it's not just the sequence, but it's the environment, it's the interaction of the genome with the environment. And so, you know, this is sort of the fundamental question of life is how does an organism become an organ, a, a, you know, why a cat instead of a dog or a, a tree instead of a flower? And it's the program of the genes. And so epigenetics is deciphering, you know, how that genome interacts with the world and with one cell with another cell. So I would say it's just that fundamental curiosity, uh, what is life? This touches me, like, personally. Um, Sie setzen sich stark ein für die Förderung von Frauen in der Wissenschaft ein und in Anbetracht der strukturellen Hürden, ist das nicht ein Kampf gegen Windmühlen? Like, you know... Ja, ich verstehe es. Yeah. Um, so the question is, is it futile to try to promote women in science? And I think absolutely not. Um, so, first of all, um, you know, we all have equal brains and, and experience, so I, uh, any, any person uh, can be a scientist or be uh, an academician or a professor. So uh, the question is how to reverse the inequality that you find in natural social situations or family situations so that you can fulfill your intellectual or academic goals. So really the, the burden of let's say, having a family or childcare, well, childbearing is really something only women can do, but as soon as the baby is born, it's really something where partners, uh, men and women can be partners in this. So if you take this core burden, um, uh, share it, then of course, each partner will have time to pursue intellectual or, or career type pursuits. So I, I think it's really the goal of promoting women is to, one, make sure that they have confidence that they can, so that they're not discouraged too early. And second of all, to open the doors so that um, all other kinds of daily burdens, social burdens, are shared equally between men and women. And of course, um, that, that makes a kind of partner, partnership uh, in any family. But I, I think that's, you know, the modern youth, this isn't strange. This is a, this is a you know, a, a, a common uh, concept. So it, it's not futile at all. Um, there is, um, what I see is there's still Schools and, and, and gymnasium are still a bit behind in promoting girls and women to do math, physics, and hard sciences. But uh, more and more is coming. And I think, you know, once um, women are driven by that same curiosity or ambition, uh, they will be as equally successful as men in science. Do you have maybe one or two sentences for the women outside just to motivate them and, yes, giving them some, yeah, yeah. courage, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, I mean, have confidence uh, that uh, 
in your uh, capacity to learn, and then um, be adaptable. You know, not every situation will be just open doors, but I, I think the most encouraging thing is just follow what you love. If you love to study, if you love to do research, if you, success comes by doing what you love to do. And I think that, you know, it's true for men too. <laughs> <laughs>